To me, Bloodborne is an unforgettable experience. I've been replaying Bloodborne during the Return to Yharnam event, and it's really hard putting all of my thoughts and feelings about this game into words, but I'm going to try. On if by any chance you haven't played Bloodborne yet and don't want to be spoiled, this video will contain spoilers, so now you've been warned. You might not like this game at all, and you're entitled to your opinion, exactly like everybody else. And opinions are great. Through discussion it makes video games progress and become better, for the most part. This was, in my opinion, the case with Bloodborne. When I first heard about Project Beast, as it was called during development, I didn't really care about it to be honest. It was just something that I happened to come across on YouTube, an ordinary kill some beast action RPG. But fast forward some time, approximately 4 months before the release of the game, and I started coming down with a fever. Blood fever. I got more and more interested in Bloodborne as time went on, and after some time I craved the experience that I knew Bloodborne could give me. The closer the release date got, the more I realized that this was a game I just had to play. I got this strange feeling that Bloodborne would be a once in a lifetime experience, and I was right. I ordered a Playstation 4 to get with Bloodborne and then I waited for it to arrive, eagerly. The PS4 eventually arrived, I unpacked it and plugged it in. I inserted Bloodborne and after waiting for approximately 2 hours for the game to install, <sighs> I finally got to boot it up. Among the first things that hit me was the atmosphere. You know when you walk out of Yusefka's clinic for the first time and open the gate leading to the first lamp in Janum? I was playing during a cold September night with the stars and the moon shining outside and me sitting Indian style one meter from the TV like I did when I was a kid. When I opened that gate for the first time I stopped from going further. I was awestruck by the amazing scenery and atmosphere of this place. Maybe it was a combination of the time of the year and me booting up the PS4 for the very first time, but I simply couldn't fathom that this was created from somebody's imagination. It was amazing. It made me feel nostalgic for some strange reason. One of Bloodborne's biggest pros is how good it is at establishing atmosphere. When you're in the hunter's dream, in the workshop for example, you can almost feel the coziness when you hear and see the crackling bonfire inside. And the rest of hunter's dream almost feels ethereal. Anyway, back to Janan. When you climb the ladder leading to the first lamp, you can also hear the frightening cry of the cleric beast in the distance. Apart from being another great introduction to Bloodborne's world, this also serves as a great foreshadowing for the boss fight later on. And by introducing the cleric beast like this, it makes the player tense up a little bit more, afraid for what he or she could potentially face. The city of Yarnum was and continues to be my favorite area in the game, together with the Hunter's Dream and Lecture Building. Yarnum is so memorable, and maybe it's because 99% of those that have played Bloodborne almost threw the controller out the fucking window trying to get past all those hunters and dogs in front of the bonfire. But for me it's something else. Yarnum feels so established, and it also gave away a nostalgic feeling. I knew then that this would be one of the things I look back on in 20 years and smile, because I remember how I felt the first time I played it. It's a special feeling that is very hard to describe. The introduction is also very important to make you interested in the game. When you meet a new person you probably have a general idea of how you feel about this person in approximately 5 minutes, at most. And for me, at least, this is also the case for video games, for the most part of course. And in Bloodborne's case, this is very true. The intro is so simple and yet it fucks your mind so much that it's simply impossible to understand what's going on at that point, and after, to 100%. You may have some ideas about what's going on, but you can never be completely sure. And this also lends to the mystery and atmosphere surrounding the game. It creates a natural urge to explore and find out what's happened and what is going on. After arriving to the Hunter's Dream, you can talk to German. And when you do talk to him for the first time, he tells you to Just go out and kill a few beasts. It's for your own good. You know... It's just what hunters do. 
but almost immediately you can sense that something is off. If you are paying close attention, you might even hear the hunters calling you a beast and saying that this town is finished, etc. And this is where some of the game's genius starts to show. It indirectly makes you think about the morals and consequences of your actions. It makes you think even more about the story and lore surrounding the world of Blood Bowl. Also, if you explore the hunter's dream at regular intervals during your playthrough, you can sometimes hear additional dialogue from both German and Dahl. German talks in his sleep, pleading for Lawrence to return, and stating that he's grown too old for this. Later, after you've defeated Rom, he talks in his sleep again, and this time he begs for somebody, anybody to unshackle him from the dream. It's clear from his dialogue that he suffers tremendously. Lawrence, Master Willem, somebody, help me, unshackle me, please, anybody, I've had enough of this dream, the night blocks all sight, oh, somebody, please. <laughs> And again, I'm just going to spoiler warn you for this, because this is a huge spoiler, so you've been warned. All this makes the end fight against German that much greater. It's obvious that he has been trapped for a long, long time, and that his suffering is never ending as long as he's still in this dream. Despite all this, however, he does everything in his power to stop you from suffering the same fate as he, even if it will make him suffer for an eternity, and yet you choose to stand against him until he finally falls. It's heart-wrenching in the best way, and the music perfectly encapsulates that. It's truly outstanding, and one of my favorite moments in video games. The doll also speaks of German's background and what he's doing in the dream, to some extent. Albeit rare, she can also pray for the hunter for a pleasant awakening from the dream, that one day it will be but a distant memory. And it just dawned on me that the writing in this game is both smart and well spoken. It's very impressive. Bloodborne is also famous for another reason. It's a pretty hard game by today's standards. It doesn't hold your hand and you yourself have to think about how to approach every enemy. It's like we've gone back in time to the NES era, but now we have better graphics. Also Konami, please make a Castlevania remaster. Do something right for once. Anyway, in my opinion, Bloodborne have three tests that determines if you're really worth it. It sounds cheesy and all, but hear me out first. The first test is obviously the guys around the fire in central Yana. The second test is the two werewolves blocking your path to the shortcut. And the third and hardest one is obviously Father Gascoigne. The boss fight that many gamers have given up on. But once you finally end him, you're all set. You're ready to take on the world and everybody in it. At least that's probably how you feel after defeating him. The adrenaline rush at killing a boss is like nothing else. And you almost feel immortal. It's something that's very hard to recreate. And then you get depressed when you found out who Gascoigne was. If you found the window with the little girl inside, you were going on a field trip. That I can guarantee you. This is a genius design choice. It makes you care more about the boss and his story, but also about that moment. It makes you never forget it. The game does an excellent job drawing you in and making you feel invested in the storyline. Another thing that really caught my attention is the beautiful architecture. The art style is a myth of gothic horror and Victorian era style, and it fits in perfectly with the feeling and time period of the game. Gothic horror is showing in almost every location, and I love every part of it. It adds on to the already creepy feeling in certain areas. Speaking of areas, there is but one area in the game that I don't like, and that's the Nightmare Frontier. But even so, all areas are extremely well thought out, both enemy placements and the structure of the level. It forces you to be alert and frightened from time to time. The level design is also very impressive. Like Dark Souls 2, you have the ability to teleport from the get-go, but instead of going the Dark Souls 2 route, they instead opted to make shortcuts great again, and the world is connected in a good way. During my first playthrough I found myself at the edge of my seat very often, and when I finally found a shortcut or a new lantern, I could finally breathe a sigh of relief. It's almost as if From went back to all of their previous masterpieces, took out all the best parts and made the best they could. Every area makes you feel something different. In the Forbidden Forest, 
It's like you're in a maze, surrounded by snakes and monsters. The upper cathedral ward is atmosphere and horror combined in the best way possible. The game is very gory and uncensored, and I love the blood spurting from the bodies of your victims when you attack them, making you bloody in the process. Now that's both cool and badass. The story is heavily influenced by H.P. Lovecraft, and what starts off as a beast hunter game ends with you hunting otherworldly creatures. The story is not crystal clear, and a lot of things are easily missable as the game doesn't throw it in your face. But you don't have to follow the story if you absolutely don't want to. You can miss storylines, and you probably will during your first playthrough. You'll uncover more about the lore and story the more you talk to NPCs and read item descriptions. And once you do, you notice how fleshed out the story and world actually are. This makes the world feel like it could maybe exist to some degree, at first. If you're like me, you're gonna love it, and probably get the I want more feeling. The whole world in Bloodborne is shrouded in mystery, and I like to believe that a big part of the urge to continue onwards for new players is because of just this mystery. It creates a natural drive for players to uncover the many secrets of Bloodborne's world. And when you're talking to NPCs, sometimes you learn about what happened before you came to Yarman. You learn about things like blood infusions, the healing church, and hunters getting blood drunk, and much, much more. The story also develops the further you get into the game, and things start to get weird, but not out of place. At the same time, From leaves a lot to the imagination and for you to figure out. There are many areas in the game with seemingly strange similarities and enemy placements that shouldn't make sense, but indicates that the story behind the place and connections to other things in Bloodborne. This has promoted lots of discussion between gamers, and a few people went the extra mile and did stuff like the Pale Blood Hunt. A deep analysis about the lore and story of Bloodborne. You really should read that, by the way. That is one of the many things I love about From's games. They promote discussion between the players, making the whole experience that much more flavorful. I also love the insight mechanic and how deep it really is. The more insight you consume or gain, the more insight <laughs> you get into the otherworldly, which reveals certain uh, things that you couldn't see before. But it also makes your frenzy easier. The item that gives insight is Madman's Knowledge. A very soothing name in my opinion. If somebody came up to you and claimed that he or she knew the purpose of life and our existence, how probable would it be that you would believe that person? Almost non-existent is my guess. This person would most likely instead be labeled as a madman. But if I have to complain about something, then it's two things only. One of the complaints is that they could have fleshed out the stories of some NPCs like Jura or add more NPCs with questlines. I know that one goal From had was to make the world feel dead or at least empty and lonely, but I think it's a bit too lonely, at least for my taste. I want to know more about those interesting characters and their respective backgrounds. The other thing is the dungeons. Yeah, before you dislike this video, <laughs> I know you feel like it. I really liked them at first, I did, but after some time I discovered how similar they all were. From did a great job making these to be honest, and it's super cool that a lot of them are randomized. But that's also something with a huge drawback. Procedurally generated terrains and worlds often become so void of any personality, originality, and most of the time doesn't feel that interesting. There are many people who have played Bloodborne that have voiced their criticism about the blood vials in this game. Unlike other Souls games, these won't recharge when you die, and this has divided the player base into those who like it and those who don't. Enemies also drop these very often, which is good. I, for one, welcome this change with open arms. No longer can you just heal and play rashly without thinking about the consequences. Although I think that some might feel like it's an unfair mechanic, and honestly, Having like 5 flasks that recharge and 15 that don't would have been more balanced, especially for those new to the series. And now the weapons. They are awesome and unique and I honestly love every single one of them. My hardest decision when starting a new character is what weapon I should play with this time. My favorite as of right now is the Holy Moonlight Sword, the Chicago, and of course the Burial Blade. And even though Bloodborne doesn't have magic in that sense, the tools are very satisfying to use. Blasting enemies with a tiny tonitrus or a call beyond is among the most badass things you can do in my opinion.
Strom really outdid themselves when they removed the equipment load. Having the ability to fashion however you want is a gift sent from God himself, or in this case the Miyazaki God. Speaking of which, the armor sets are so varied and I love experimenting with different combinations at all times. And perhaps you do too. Another of Bloodborne's biggest strength is the speed of the game. The battles and encounters are fast and merciless. During each battle there is little room to breathe, which makes it all that more exhilarating. Having no shield is also an improvement, at least in this setting. Dodging a beast's heavy fierce swipes and pounding on it before avoiding more attacks will make your pulse rise like Nintendo stock after releasing Pokemon Go. Every boss has an amazing design, except the witch, which is... Um, well the fight sucks. I also like that they somehow managed to make most bosses feel unique, even though many of them are beasts. They are a challenge, but feels fair most of the time. And then we have the DLC. It's simply a must have if you have Bloodborne already. It's just that good, and honestly it might be considered among if not THE best DLC From has ever made, and among one of the best DLCs anybody has made for that matter. It's like they added frosting to an already excellent cake. The Old Hunters is a masterpiece in its own right. There is but two problems I have with this DLC, and that is one, Lawrence, and two, those fish guys in the well. You know a game is truly great when you have platinumed it, and you still enjoy it as much as you did when playing through it for the very first time. I really hope that this game will be one of the nostalgic games of the future, the same way Castlevania, The Legend of Zelda and Donkey Kong are today. Bloodborne has given me an experience I will never forget. It's truly a hunter's dream. Thanks for watching this video guys, if you liked it you can subscribe for more game related content in the future and or leave a comment down below. I appreciate every bit of support I can get and I hope I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one everybody, see ya!